Hi and welcome to the Alcode channel. In this video we are going to see how to install and use WAMP Server, an application package designed and created for web development. But before starting the installation, let's see what WAMP Server is and why we should install it on our computer. WAMP Server refers to the acronym of Windows Operating System for which it is available, Apache Web Server that allows us to execute files in PHP language, MySQL or MariaDB which are database management systems, and PHP Programming Language for Web Development. When installing one server, we will be installing all these applications, and in summary, it will allow us to run our PHP code files on a local server together with the databases that we create, thus being able to design our web page or application. It should be noted that one server is only available for Windows, so if you have another operating system such as Linux or Mac, I recommend you install SAMP, another widely used application package for web development that it is available for all operating systems. Personally, I use WAMP Server because it is the one that I have always used and I consider that its interface is much better and simpler and more intuitive. Well, I'll stop chattering and let's get on with the installation process. The first thing we will have to do is go to the official website of WAMP Server through our browser or by following the link that I leave you below in the description. Once here, we will go to the download section and as you can see, two options will appear depending on whether our operating system is 64 or 32 bits. To see how many bits our operating system has, we will only have to go to the Windows search engine and type system. We press enter and as you can see a new tab opens where it tells us that our system type is 64 bits. We close the tab and select the option corresponding to 64 bits. As you can see a form opens that it is not mandatory for us to complete. One server is totally free and as you can see here if we follow this link which says that we can download it directly, we will be redirected to a new web page where we can download it. We accept this here that tell us privacy and we click download. Next, we must wait for a countdown in order to download the installer. As you can see, the installer has already started to download. Now we must wait for the download to finish. And once the download is finished, we open it. Well, as you can see, we are already inside the installer and the first thing that is shown is a tab in which it asks us to select a language for the installer. Here we will only have the options of English and French. Next, we see the license agreement that we will only have to check the box indicating that we accept it and we click next. Next, here we are shown the path in which the software will be stored. We we'll leave it by default and click Next. This screen shows us the applications that will be installed with one server. As you can see, we have both Apache and PHP in their different versions. If you want another version of PHP, you can check these boxes. And we have also the MySQL and MariaDB databases and PHP MyAdmin. We click next, next, and we click install. Next, we wait for the win bar to load. Well, as we can see, the green bar has finished loading and a tab appears in which it indicates that Internet Explorer will be used as the default browser to load our local server. And then it asks us if we want to use some other installed browser. Personally, I like to use Google Chrome, but you can use any other like Mozilla or Internet Explorer. 
To change our default browser, we click Yes. The file explorer will be opened to us and we must select the application of our browser. In this case, for Google Chrome, we will go to Local Disk C, Program Files, to Google, Chrome, Application, and as you can see here is the Chrome application. We select it and click on Open. The following warning tells us that Notepad will be used as the full text editor for WAMP server. Since we are not going to have to touch any code within WAMP server, we click No, but you can select any other editor if you wish. Then, as you can see, the green bar finishes loading. Now the installation is finished. We click Next, and finally on Finish. And we already have one server installed. Ok, we have already closed the tab of our browser and we are now on the desktop. As you can see here we have a direct access to one server. To start using it, all we have to do is double click on it. Next, the system asks us for permission to run the application. We select yes, and then a series of Windows console screens are loaded. We don't have to touch any button, just wait, and as you can see below, if we open the drop down, a one server icon appears. This icon is initially red, and when we start one server, it goes from orange to green. When it is green, it means that all services are working correctly, and one server has been running at 100%. If you see that after a while the icon does not change to green and remains orange, there is a problem. This problem is probably due to the fact that one server is using the same port as another application that you already have installed. By default, one server uses port 80, and to solve it, you will have to change this port. You can do this by looking for a tutorial on YouTube, how to change the port in one server, or we will surely do a tutorial later so you can follow the label that will appear in the upper right corner. Well, once this problem is, has been explained, we see that if we go to the WAMP server icon and right click, a settings menu with different options is displayed. And here we can select the language. As you can see, there are multiple languages with which we can work with WAMP server, among which are Spanish. The other options that we see in this menu are the WAMP settings, the tools and the help tab from where we can consult the WAMP server documentation and how its apps work. If we return to our icon and instead of right clicking we press left click, we see that the WAMP server menu opens. The first option that appears is localhost. If we click on this, our browser will be displayed with the main page of our localhost. Here we can consult the documentation of Apache, PHP and our databases as well as other links. Back in the menu, we see that the next option that appears is phpMyAdmin, the database management system that we will use to create and manage our own databases. If we click on this option, we see that the browser is displayed again at the address localhost slash phpMyAdmin. And the first thing that appears is a welcome screen with a default root user, which does not need any password and the choice from the server which can be MySQL or MariaDB. If we click on continue, we see that we are logging into our database manager system with our root user. Don't worry because later in the channel I will do a specific tutorial on how to use phpMyAdmin so that you can learn from scratch. Below phpMyAdmin is that minor option, an alternative as a database management system. Personally, I have never used this management system since most developers use phpMyAdmin. But if you want a tutorial on how to use AdMiner, you can leave it below in the comments and I will bring it as soon as possible. The next of the menu option is a drop down, from where we can access to the local host again or open the virtual host management. This last option will allow us to create a virtual host within our local server in a much faster and easier way. Basically, what a virtual host does is simulate a web domain. By default, one server opens our projects on the local server under the URL localhost slash the name of our project. But if we want to have custom URLs 
for each of our projects, we must add virtual host to them. To do this, we will simply have to fill in these fields. In the first of them, we will have to include the URL under which we want our project to open. And in the second, the path where the folder containing the code files of our project is stored. It should be noted that all code files and all our projects must be stored in the 3W directory, as indicated here. And if we go to the next option on our menu, we see that the 3W directory appears. If we click on this, our file explorer will open at the address 164 slash 3W. Here we will have to store all our projects. Don't worry because at the end of the video, I will show you an example of how to load a project within our local server and we will also add a virtual host to it. If we continue down the menu, we see that the options for the applications that we have installed with WAMP already appear here. The first one is Apache. From here, we can check the version, the mods, and the settings, as well as the configuration files. The same is true for PHP and for our databases with MySQL and MariaDB. If you already have everything working correctly, I do not recommend that you touch any of these settings. And finally, we see that down here in the menu, we have three controllers to start, stop, and restart WAM server services. By default, WAM server will stop all its services when we turn off our computer. However, if we want to stop or restart them for any reason during the time of use of our system without having to turn it off, we can do it directly from here. And to finish, we are going to see a practical example on how to load a project into our local server. To do this, the first thing we will have to do is go to the 3W directory through the WAM server menu or from our file explorer. In Windows, if we have left the default settings during the installation process, this directory will be located inside the local disk C, WAM64, and as you can see here is the 3W folder. Once inside the 3W directory, what we will have to do is load our project. In this case, I have it here in the desktop, so I just drag it and upload it. Well, we already have our project loaded into the local server. Now, all we have to do is go to the browser that we have defined as default in the installation process and type the address localhost slash the name of our project. This name must be the same with which we have saved the folder within the 3W directory. Here, as you can see, my folder is called Web Gross Clothes. So I copy the name and paste it into the browser, after the bar, without leaving any space. We press enter, and as you can see, our project has already been uploaded to the local server and we can view it. In this case, you see that my project is an e-commerce website for the sale of clothing. If you want to know how to program this fully automated website from scratch, step by step, and using databases, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned, as we will surely bring it in the format of a series in the next videos. After checking that our project works correctly and all our files are loaded and we can view them, we will proceed to create our virtual host so that instead of this ugly URL with the local host at the beginning, we'll have a custom URL. It is not strictly necessary to upload our projects, but it's more clean and professional. For this, what we will have to do is go to our WAM server menu as we have done many times and open the your virtual host dropdown. Here, we will click on the virtual host management tab. As you can see, it is loaded within our browser and what we have to do is fill in these two fields that appear here. The first of them, we must specify the URL under which we want our project to open. In this case, the URL that I am going to choose is grossclothes.com. In addition, a good practice is to add the developer extension .devl at the end, which will differentiate our files that we upload into the local server 
from those that we upload to the web server. In the next field, we must add the path in which our project is located. As we have already said, all our projects should be in the 3W directory. A trick to load the path of our project quickly and without having to type it is to open our 3W file explorer. Once here, we will get into the folder in which our project is located, and we will click on the upper bar. We click, and as we can see, the absolute path of our project is loaded. We copy it, Control copy and paste it in the field, Control v The last of the fields is optional, and it is not necessary to fill it in. This simply if we want to use a different port than the default one. In this case, we are not interested, so we simply click the Start button. And our virtual host has been created. We see the message that it has been created correctly, and here it tells us that we have to restart the DNS in order to use the virtual host. For this, it is as simple as going back to our WAM server icon, right-clicking and going to the Tools section. In the first of these options, you see that the option to restart DNS appears. We click on it, and as you see, some black screens will be loaded. We do not need to touch absolutely anything. We wait for the screens to pass, and if everything went well, you can see that our WAM server icon is green again. To load our virtual host, we can either write the URL that we have specified in the browser, or through the menu we can open the Your Virtual Host drop-down again, and as you can see, our URL appears here. We click on it, and as you can see, the project loads again, and everything works correctly. As you can see, now we see the URL that we have specified, and here the icon has been changed, and instead of the WAM server icon, we see this generic web icon. And this has been all WAM server. If you liked the video and it has helped you, remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like and comment. We are very interested in what type of videos you want us to bring in the future. Also, remember that you must be aware since in the next few days we will begin a series to create, step by step and from scratch, the web project of the e-commerce closing store that you have just seen in this video. Again, we hope you liked the video. See you in the next one. Bye!